Hi everyone, so let's now focus on a monopsonist labour market. Here we're dealing with a sole buyer of labour in a given market. So the firm is a dominant or monopoly buyer of labour. They are known as monopsonists or monopsonies. Okay, don't confuse them with monopolies. Uh, this is different. This simply refers monopsonist as someone who is a sole buyer or monopoly buyer of, in this case, labour. Okay, uh, these firms will have dominant labour market power. We identified that they're usually oligopolies or monopolies, uh, and they may have regional, local, or even national market power when it comes to the labour market. Uh, they will often try to lower wages and the level of employment within a given marketplace. Okay. Now we've got a diagram which highlights a monopsony labour market here and I just wanted to talk you through the actual uh, price and output uh, points because it's easy to make a couple of mistakes on that. But just before we do that, let's just remind ourselves the downward sloping demand equals marginal revenue product curve. So we've got a negative slope here uh, and that is because of the fact that firms will want to substitute labour for capital if they can in the longer term and in the short term of course we face diminishing marginal returns. Okay. Uh, meanwhile for the supply curve we've got an upward sloping supply curve as we've seen before but you'll remember that we've got that deviation between the marginal cost and the supply curve. We didn't see this in perfectly capacitive labour markets. We saw that the marginal cost will equal the supply for a given firm. So this is different. And remember the reasons for this. Okay, the reason really is because to attract more workers to a given industry, you need to offer higher and higher wages. As you offer higher wages to that marginal employee, that next employee, then it will mean that you need to offer higher wages to everyone. Okay, so that means that the marginal cost of employing that next employee will uh, be greater, particularly when you factor in the, the uh, fact that everyone will then need to be paid that higher wage rate. Okay, so we can see this deviation, marginal cost is always greater than the supply curve. Now it's useful just to come back to uh, our monopoly products market that we've seen previously uh, in theory of the firm and business economics. And this just really helps us to actually put this into context here and understand exactly what's taking place in our monopsony labor market here. Okay, um, so you remember to determine the actual output level here. We look at the point, the profit maximizing point is of course where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Okay, so we see that point here and we can then highlight the actual quantity for a monopoly firm here and take that level up uh, to the price line or the average revenue line. Meanwhile, we can take that price across and we can see a monopolist would charge uh, price PM. Meanwhile, we can identify the area of super normal profits that the firm will actually make there. Okay, so we can highlight that area just to really show that we understand that concept, that concept there. But the crucial point here is that the firm is a um, profit maximizer who tries to maximize profits at the point where MC equals MR. Okay, so let's now look at the monopsonist and how they will use such information here. Uh, okay, so the key principle again, once again, MC equals, and in this case, it's not just MR, it's MRP, marginal revenue product, of course. So we can see at this level of uh, output here, okay, um, then we've got where the actual marginal revenue product equals the marginal cost of employing those additional workers. If we take that line down, we can then see the point at which that intersects the supply curve. Okay, now at that point, we can then identify for our monopsony, the wage rate that will actually be offered to a given employee. Meanwhile, we can take that wage rate across and highlight WM. Now, it's very, very easy to make a mistake here if you're doing this quickly under time conditions. 
and identify this as the wage rate. That is incorrect, okay? Because you are, you've got to think, right, well, what is the wage of those employees at a given point? And it is determined by the supply curve. The marginal cost just implies the additional cost in employing that next labourer and the fact that you've got to pay everyone now a higher wage, okay? So there is a key difference there. Please avoid making that mistake, okay? Um, so further to this, what we can also do is take this to uh, another level here where we could actually compare it with a uh, competitive market outcome. So we could see um, in the competitive labour market we saw uh, the point of equilibrium was where supply equal demand and we can see that here uh, highlighted by WPC EPC okay perfectly competitive labor market so we can see in a perfectly competitive labor market the level of employment will be higher and the wage will be greater okay now this is this is all really good stuff in terms of your analysis because this can be taken to uh, the next level here as well and you could if needs be and depends on the question that you're offered highlight the fact that we do see an area of deadweight economic loss here okay so there is an area of deadweight economic loss there uh, okay so that's that's all really good stuff perhaps though what you might want to cite within this as well is the fact that the wage rate is very low. Yes, employment is also very low within uh, a monopsony labour market because as we've said, they lower wages and the level of employment. And what this can possibly mean, of course, is that they keep their cost base very low. By keeping their cost base low, then that may enable them to generate more supernormal profits, perhaps. OK, so that could be argued as a potential advantage if you're thinking about the longer term dynamic efficiency of uh, an organization that's a nice sophisticated point that you'd be able to bring into your essay writing there okay um, if we just come back to our uh, monopoly diagram in the uh, product market again we can see that there is a deadweight economic loss here between the competitive market outcome which would be uh, where the price equals the marginal cost here, okay? Uh, or supply, in effect, supply the marginal cost equals the demand, the average revenue, okay? Um, so there's a lot of similarities here, and we can see the fact that um, the output level, let's just highlight that so we can see the difference here. Um, so we could see within a competitive marketplace there, we'd achieve QC, and that, that output differential, the fact that output is much, much lower in a monopoly than a perfectly competitive market, um, is likely to mean that it directly corresponds with the level of employment. Okay, here we've got less employment, so you'd expect less output generally. Okay, right, I hope that's useful. Thank you, guys.